Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Court the Nurse Realtor, and I am Court the Nurse Realtor. If you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you are an oldie, but a goldie, hey girl, hey, hey boy, hey, welcome back to my channel. As my goldies know, if you see a scrub top with a stethoscope, this is going to be a nurse related video. And the video, this video today is about the essentials that you will need as a PACU nurse. So if you like, girl, what I'm gonna need, like I'm just starting to pack you. If you like, girl, what do y'all start the day off with? If you wanna just be plain old nosy, go ahead and stay tuned to this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and ring my bell. Ring my bell. My bell. Really. Ring my bell so you can stay notified of my weekly videos. Okay guys, so if you don't know, my name is Courtney. I have been a registered nurse for 12 years and my experience ranges from med search tele, hospice, emergency room or emergency department, PACU recovery room, and most recently case management with the emphasis on utilization review. Um, and so I have spent the bulk of my career though in the PACU recovery room. I have decided to do a quick little series about being a PACU nurse and the things and tools that you'll need to be a successful PACU nurse. So today we are going to talk about the essentials of a PACU nurse. So I have all, I have done a video on what's in my nursing bag. Should be right here. But I'm going to show you what are the essentials. And that was like more of a general like if you are a nurse what you need to have. But these are essentials and I'm going to mention some other things that you need as a PACU nurse and how to make sure that your bays are set up and ready to go. So if you have a PACU, if you're a PACU nurse, you want to make sure you have something like this. A little bag, a little tote because you're going to be mobile and there's some things that you're going to need. So of course you need pens. Okay, you're going to need a pen to write, you know, nurses steal pens, so you need your pen, so that way you can monitor your patient or monitor the critical things. Now, I'm not going to lie, I always would take a sheet of paper from the printer and I would keep that paper and I would be putting the labels of all the patients because sometimes things move really quickly in the PACU, so I would use those labels to come back and double check my charting to make sure that I did all that I needed to do for that day. So that's just a quick little tip to make sure that you stay on task, especially if you're new. So say, for instance, you're getting somebody from um, the PACU, you get two patients back to back. One patient may require that you... Um, you know that you do certain things by certain times by the physician so you may need to jot those down or you know there's just certain things that happen throughout the day so that I always use a nurse brain video right here to keep myself on track and it, you can use that in any specialty but anyway so let's get down to the true PACU essentials so first and foremost well not first and foremost but first I'm going to pull out the bag is this pen light so if you work in a hospital or trauma, level one, level two trauma, if you work in a hospital that sees a lot of stroke patients, um, it just, if you work in a, a, a place where you just get a lot of neuro cases, you need a pen light. Even if you don't, you should, even if you don't work in those type of um, hospitals, you get regular, you know, just every day nothing too crazy type of patients you need a pen light because remember you are monitoring these pe these patients from um from post sedation or post anesthesia so sometimes the reactiveness lets you know and how deep of a sleep these patients are and you, it also lets the um lets you know like okay no i need to get an anesthesiologist because baby she too sleep like you need to wake her up like what's going on so you need to have a pen light and these are really cheap i'm actually surprised this one works because i have not touched this thing in like years and it's still like lighting up so they're very inexpensive and they're durable um, another thing that you will need, depending on the type of cases, is a Kelly clamp. So a Kelly clamp, um, we've used the. I use these a lot. We use these for uro, urological patients. Sometimes you know you're trying to figure out if there's a blockage. Sometimes you're trying to or anything tube management. So you can use these in your urology patients. Sometimes you might use these in your um, your uh, ooh, chest tube patients. So anybody with that. Some sometimes you are required to clot those tubes off and the kelly clamps are what will can well, can you see it can you see the kelly clamp the kelly clamps are what you use to block those areas off so i have this tube one and yeah this uh, sorry curved one and you use these for like those different type of situations always remember to follow your your hospital's policy and procedures your hospital's protocol so if your hospital say we don't use kelly clamps you don't use kelly clamps but this is something that i keep in the cuff or in the keep because you never know when you might need these so kelly clamps 
Um, I personally always keep a permanent marker. And I keep a permanent marker for a variety of different reasons. But I keep it especially for my PACU because sometimes you may have strike through. Sometimes you may have bleeding. And what I will do is like say for instance if I get a first post-op patient and maybe it's like a vascular procedure or something that could have like some drainage or whatever. I am going to mark around that area. Now they do have markers they use preoperatively to mark patients like for procedure sites and all of that you can use that as well but sometimes it's not available and I need to know what's going on with my patients so I will use a permanent marker to just go around not touch the secretions but go around the, br the brim so I can tell how quickly it's growing this is a way to monitor for if there are any hem if there's hemorrhaging or bleeding that needs to be attended to or you need to make the surgeon aware so always have a permanent marker handle Coffee jet. Now I don't know. You guys comment about down below. Are you is your facility using coffee jet? So this a lot of times is used for your um, for your narcotics. So I don't have one to show you, but this is basically a way to you to to use a needleless system. You the 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 medicine comes in like the the canister that uh, adapts to this, and you just click it in, twist it in, and it becomes basically like a syringe with medicine and it's needleless so i always keep me a carpu jack handy but also follow your facilities policy because i've gone to um facilities where they don't use this but listen i keep one of these in the clutch and if you can get your hands on one i suggest you keep it in the clutch too especially especially if you plan to travel nurse um other things that i think you do need and i don't have see i got another i got two carpu jacks um that i don't have in here i thought i did have which is bandage scissors sometimes um you may have times where you have to wrap or re um you know you there are some procedures that are messy so you may have a lot of drainage which is expected and you may have to do a, band, a dressing change or something of the sort you need to have your bandage scissors ready to go and always just you know make sure you wipe them down with your cabby wipes Another um, pack you essential that you need is airway, airway, airways. So you know if you watch my other video on airway management, these two airways are a pack you essential. You need to know where your ample bag is. You need to know where you can find these oral airways, your oral or your nasal, nasal airway should you need them. So make sure that you have this at your bay and make sure that it is ready to go for your patient if need be. So this is a pack you essential as well. Okay, so let's talk about your bays. When you get your bays, always check for these things. And bays are the areas where your pack you is um, where you receive your patients. So uh, almost all bays are set up with two monitors, one for each patient. You have the cords to connect your EKG cords, your blood pressure, your O2 sat. Make sure that depending on your facility, you have certain things. Every time I go into a facility, I don't care if I'm traveling, if I know, I I don't care if I was the person who closed the place down last night. I always check for a working and boo bag. I always check for a suction to make sure the suction is there ready to go and that you have um, the, the, the actual suction piece there. So that way if you need to use it or if you need to open it, it's ready to go. And I always make sure the cables are there for the act to actually hook up to a pa hook the patient up to the to the monitor. Um make sure you have syringes and make sure you have the needles to get any meds that you may need. Make sure you have computer. Like you need to be before you take accept a patient, you need to make sure that you have these things in order because sometimes things can go downhill really quickly i remember i had a patient or actually sorry um i remember that i had a patient who um who it wasn't even my patient i was recovering i was on a travel assignment i was recovering um my patient and we they they were short staff that i was the senior nurse and girl i was the travel nurse i hadn't only been there a couple of weeks but they had like a mass exit in their PACU area so they had an er nurse who floated sometimes to PACU and she was recovering a patient but a lot of people don't know like how to or a lot of nurses sometimes if you're fresh from like er or you're fresh from like med surge tele pcu whatever they really don't know how to use um 
the, the, the narcotics or the, the anesthesia meds. So this particular place, they allowed the nurses to give her sad, okay? So my girl comes on and she's like, Courtney, well, do you think I should give this lady um, however much percent? And I was like, you know, you should take it easy because you really don't know how much she can handle. She's like, okay, but I feel like, you know, she has a history and such and such, so maybe she can have a little, because, you know, she can have a little more. Whatever, she used her nursing judgment, and she gave this, and next thing I know, she was hollering my name, and the lady was blue. And she was like, Courtney, help me! So I look, and then the lady's blue, O2 said, nothing's happening. And I was like, well, what did you give her? Oh, I gave her Versed. Okay, cool. So in my mind, I know Versed has a quick half-life, so it's going to be okay. You just got to, you got to breathe for her. So right then and there, dropped the bed, pulled, you know, did my chin chin tilt jaw thrust and started grabbed the ambu bag and started bagging her and giving her the breath she needs while we would wait for anesthesia to come out to assess this patient listen if i had not checked my bags if i didn't know my anesthesia um didn't know if my ambu bag was there sister girl would have been as good as gone but because i checked my bags and i made sure everything was appropriate prior to receiving patients for everybody i knew that you know i can hop quick right into action that is what you want. You want to be prepared because things can happen very quickly in the phase one of recovery. So I hope this video was very informative. Please let me know in the comments box. Uh, most importantly, I want you to know that I love you, but God, he loves you so much more. God bless you.